You probably know this guy. It's Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek. And maybe you even know this guy. This is Professor Calculus. But I guess you don't know that those two characters are inspired by a real person? A real scientist? Professor August Picard. This is a picture of him taken in 1932. I think he looks a little like Dirk Vriemout, the first Belgian guy that went into space in 1992, at the age of 51. But um, this video is not about Dirk Vriemout. This video is about a legit and real scientist. August Picard was a famous Swiss physicist, inventor and explorer. He did a lot of manned and unmanned hot air balloon flights to study Earth's upper atmosphere and cosmic rays. This was long before NASA existed. No one ever did experiments like that. He made big pressurized metal spheres to protect himself at high altitude. Massive hot air balloons took him over 10 miles into the sky, where he did different experiments. He painted one side of the sphere black, so that when it got too hot inside, they could rotate the black side towards the sun to make it colder again. A lot of things went wrong on the first trip. First of all, the German authorities tried to ban the flight because it was too dangerous. At the last minute they decided that helmets must be worn, so Professor Picard improvised a little with materials he could find, which was fine for the Germans. During takeoff, the motor that was designed to rotate the black side towards the sun got damaged. This means that the explorers experienced temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius. Because of a valve problem, they could not descend when they wanted and the trip took many more hours. The press pronounced the explorers dead, but a few hours later they landed safely. They reached an altitude of 16 kilometers or 10 miles. He did two flights and that made him the first man to witness the curvature of the earth with his own eyes, according to this website of Bertrand Picard, who is closely related to August. Because it's his grandfather. So, since I'm a flat earther, that makes this guy very interesting for me. I never knew about this guy, they never told me in school. I found out about him thanks to the Scarecrow on YouTube because he uploaded a very interesting video. I suggest you all subscribe to Scarecrow. He is an awesome guy that makes very good music. He is gonna be a famous rapist one day. After many different balloon flights, a few years later Professor Picard started to build submarines to explore the depths of the oceans. Many others after him explored the atmosphere and also the ocean depths including many members from his family, for example his son Jacques Picard. This shows me that long before NASA even existed, people used to explore these extreme places. I find it strange that so many of these explorers and even NASA astronauts do missions at both high altitude and deep below the ocean's surface. There are a few video interviews online with August Picard, some with globes in the background, some without. But they are all in French and because my French is not that good, I can't understand some parts. But this proves to me that they had video cameras back then, so I wonder why there are no high altitude pictures from back then. For me it's hard to fully trust all of this information because some of the experiments, like the first balloon flight, was done in cooperation with the Belgian government. And most of you probably know that I don't trust governments. But still it's an interesting person to research and I hope some other people will look into him after this video. To finish this video, please watch this clip that discusses a TV commercial related to all of this. Here's where the world begins to mock us. The world knows. I can't believe that this commercial was made. The Fricks saw this on TV and had me watch it. This is where it gets really interesting. Now this is, this is new. This is not something I shared last time. But this is a Hennessy. I guess this is a scotch or is it uh, cognac or what? I don't know. It's some kind of fancy liquor. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. 
It's fancy liquor. I never got to the real fancy stuff. Right? All right. But this is their commercial. Are we ready to play that commercial? Let's play the commercial, and then we'll talk about it. I want y'all to watch this closely. This is a true event that happened in 1931. The physicist, the Belgian, Swiss physicist, um, August Picard. This is a true historic event, but they didn't present it in this commercial completely accurate. But we'll deal with that in a second. But it's it's amazingly. Once you realize what they're showing, go ahead. So in 1931, the Belgian physicist, who was also a friend of Albert Einstein and worked with Albert Einstein from time to time. I mean, this is a, this is a very intelligent man, PhD in physics, an engineer. This man created, he built this craft, he put it in, he went up, he was the first man, so he's world record setter, Dr. August. Picard, uh, Star Trek, Jean-Luc Picard, named after him, okay? Uh, first man to reach the stratosphere, the first man who went that high. Now notice in the commercial, the first couple of horizons they show you, completely flat, right? Um, he did this in, on May 27th, 1931, he set a world record at 51,775 feet. Uh, here's a picture. Of, uh, I took some stills of this. They showed us. What, what are they showing us here? They're showing us the basically flat horizon. Now, I love how they try, they change it, but it shows him going up, and it shows him breaking through the firmament into what? Water. They're mocking us. They know the truth, and they're mocking us. Now, here's uh, some pictures. August Picard, PhD in physics. Uh, this is well-known historic figure. I mean, stamps of him. I mean, he's. Uh, this is not some guy. I can't believe how I never heard of him. Here's him in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, says he was. Uh, he died in 19. He was born in 1884. Died in 1962. Swiss-born Belgian physicist, notable for his exploration of both the upper stratosphere and the depths of the sea in ships uh, of his own design. In 1930, he built a balloon to study cosmic rays. In 1932, he developed a new cabin designed for balloon flights. In the same year, he ascended to 17,008 meters, 55,800 feet, completed. Uh, another one he did it later on. Um, he was born into a family of Swiss scholars. Um, I, you know, he worked with, like I said, he worked with Albert Einstein. Here's a picture of him with his assistant in the capsule in, that they went up in, and it had portholes, and this is a porthole. Um, and then I found this. This is a popular science magazine from August 1931. He did this in May. So just a few months after his ascent to a world record height, um, there was an article in there, 10 miles high in an airtight balloon. 
Now, just so people could say that I, that I didn't get this off the internet, I did a little research. So I went on eBay and searched for Popular Science Magazine, 1931, August edition. I found one. I paid $15 for this. It was 25 cents in 1931. Just to verify this fact, and I'm going to read this article to you. This is the testimony of a physicist, scientist, engineer, the first man to reach the stratosphere that height. His testimony of the shape of the earth. Can I read this to you? Uh -huh. It's on page 23. This blew my mind getting this. Just to verify. Is that the same order? If I was in court, this would be exhibit one. Right? It says a huge yellow balloon soared skyward a few weeks ago from Augsburg, Germany. Instead of a basket, it trailed an airtight black and silver aluminum ball. Within, Professor August Picard, physicist, and Charles Kepfer aimed to explore the air 50,000 feet up. 17 hours later, after being given up for dead, they returned safely from an estimated height of more than 52,000 feet, almost 10 miles, shattering every aircraft altitude record. Oxygen tanks kept them alive while they made observations. Uh, records of their instruments are now being checked and interpreted first. The uh, first to rise safely into the upper layer of the Earth's stratosphere, they found the air pressure at 10 miles altitude so low, one-tenth of that at sea level, that a man exposed to it would perish, much as a deep fish would uh, a deep fish, a deep sea fish burst of its own internal pressure when it's brought to the Earth's surface. Picard and his aide found cosmic rays, mysterious radiations from outer space. They thought, of course, far more powerful than the Earth's surface and engaged uh, their intensity. The explorers trapped samples of upper air, blue air, as Picard reported it to appear in cylinders. Analysis may prove it exceptionally rich in ozone. The intense blue gas supposedly uh, responsible for the heavy side layer uh, or radio roof. Now listen to this. The story of their adventure surpasses fiction. During the ascent, the aluminum ball began to leak. They plugged it desperately with Vaseline and cotton waste, stopping the leak. In the first half hour, the balloon shot up nine miles through, and through portholes, the observers saw the earth through copper-colored, then bluish haze. Here's what he said. It seemed a flat disc with upturned edge. Mm -hmm. Now this is 1931, before NASA. Before they decided they were going to lie to us, before they conspired worldwide <laughs> to lie. Some people say that, that there are no scientists that are flat earthers. Well, guess what? He told you what he saw. What is this magazine? You didn't, you, you, why did we never hear that in our schools? I never heard of this man. Took an Illuminati commercial to make me look, who is this man? Just another picture of him. And just so you know, this is what I just read right here. Where it says, it seemed a flat disc with upturned edge. The edge is the ice wall barrier all the way around. 